I thought I'd begin with this uh, interesting entry that was put into a book published in 2007 called The Reagan Diaries. And here on page 334, this is Reagan speaking to, it says, lunch with five top scientists. It was fascinating. Space truly is the last frontier. And some of the developments there in astronomy are like science fiction, except they are real. I learned that our shuttle capacity is such that we could orbit 300 people. So I want to ask all of you today, uh, the shuttle only holds eight astronauts. How does Reagan get this 300 people going into this shuttle system? How, how could this possibly be true? Then we've got some interesting statements made by Neil Armstrong. It says, uh, this is July 20th, 1994 at the White House. There are great ideas undiscovered, breakthroughs available to those that can re remove one of truth's protective layers. There are places to go beyond belief. Neil Armstrong, 25th anniversary of the Apollo moon landing. Then we have Above Top Secret by Timothy Good. Interesting statement here, a transaction between a scientist of an MI6 individual and Neil Armstrong. And this is page 186, so I'm not just making this up. Uh, Professor, what really happened there on Apollo 11? Armstrong, it was incredible, of course. We'd always known there was a possibility. The fact is, we were warned off. There was never any question then of a space station or a moon city. Professor, how do you mean warned off? Armstrong, I can't go into details except to say that their ships were far superior to ours, both in size and technology. Boy, they were big and menacing. No, there is no question of a space station. So, again, this is page 186 of Timothy Good's Above Top Secret. So it turns out, ladies and gentlemen, that there are, in point of fact, two space programs, one in the form of a public relations smokescreen organization known as NASA. The other one is called U.S. Air Force Space Command, also known as Solar Warden, and that comes from Paul Lee Violette and the Huffington Post, 12-7-2012. Here's another question we need to look at, too. Did the Rockwell Star Raker go operational? Is this what Ronald Reagan was talking about when he talked about the capability of orbiting 300 people? Obviously, he wasn't talking about putting those people into the shuttle cargo bay. This was a proposal for a 1979 single stage to orbit, high lift wing orbital launch vehicle, 310 foot length, 360 foot wingspan, capacity of 200,000 pounds for the cargo, and it was powered by 10 high bypass turbofan ramjets, three liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen rocket engines. So this could have been something that we as the general public were never clued in on, but Reagan may have actually been given a briefing.